Welcome to another Now Playing vlog where I talk about some of the games I've been playing lately and what I think of them. This video was made possible thanks to fan support with Patreon. If you'd like to help Actual Lol grow bigger and better, go to patreon.com forward slash actuallol. Now before I talk about the games today, I want to talk about Paladin Sleeves. They are currently on Kickstarter and they sent me a whole bunch of these card sleeves. Now if you don't know, I am a sleeving addict, which is something I'm not necessarily that proud of, but I have most of my games in my collection, the cards are sleeved, and I do it because I like shuffling with premium sleeves, I play a lot in pubs where the tables are really sticky and they will just ruin cards, and I don't like the thought, if I am ever gonna pass or sell a game on, that I've damaged that game in some way and the person that receives it is kind of disappointed, because that's happened to me and, and it sucks. In the past, I've largely used Fantasy Flight sleeves because they're well made, and they're the ones that I've liked. I've had a bit of an issue with Mayday Premium. Sometimes they break or they've got, they, I've had sizing issues with them. But I did also have some issues with Fantasy Flight, which is that they're a little bit too long. They've got this silly haircut on them that just makes them look stupid. They don't come in all sizes, which is frustrating. And they're expensive. So Paladin are offering an alternative that are slightly thinner. These are 90 microns, Fantasy Flight are 100. But I've been using these for weeks now and I really like them. They come in loads of sizes. I think it's like 17 sizes. So you've got normal card size and uh, American, uh, small, mini American, mini European and European, along with a whole bunch of others, Seven Wonders and Dixit. And then there's also ones for specific games like Kingdom Death Monster. I found that they're really well made. They shuffle nicely. And the benefit really is that you're getting more of them. So there's 55 car, uh, sleeves in a pack rather than 50. So they've taken it up to 11 basically. And that you can buy them in bulk. So on this Kickstarter, you can buy a whole bunch of them. And so you're gonna get a bulk discount. Whereas if you were to buy sleeves in a shop or one at a time, you're just gonna make a saving that way. So if you like sleeving cards, if that's something that you do, then They've not paid me to say this, but I've enjoyed using them and I think that they offer a good alternative to Fantasy Flight. So if, you, if you're looking for premium sleeves, check out the Paladin Kickstarter. It's on now, this is their second successful Kickstarter. They've, they've done one and delivered that previously and the link is in the description. Photosynthesis is another game that I was super excited about at Essen. And this is a abstract game about planting and growing trees. And this is from Blue Orange Games. And the thing that most appealed to me about this game was it it's stunning. It's just beautiful to look at. The box art alone is amazing. And I'm just really, I think it's possibly my favorite box art of all time. And then on the table, you've got these wonderful 3D trees that you're planting in these different colors. The way the game works is that you are collecting light points. You're collecting, the sun is moving around the board and when they shine on your trees, you collect light from them. You collect one point for a small tree, two for a medium, three for a big tree, and then you use those light points to do everything in the game. So you use it to plant seeds, to grow trees up one size, and then you also use those points to chop the trees down. The only way you make any end game points to win the game is to chop down uh, one of your big trees and you'll score points based on where it is in this, in this circular map. It's a really interesting idea that has the theme to it because other trees will block you from getting the sun that you need to collect those light points. As trees get bigger, bigger trees create bigger shadows and so that's gonna make it really harder for those small trees to get the light points. And so I think that for an abstract game, it's got a surprising amount of theme, a really refreshing amount of theme. The game itself has something of an old fashioned feel in my mind. It has no variable setup, so the board is identical every single time you play it and it starts off completely blank and then you're just making decisions and so every move you make in the game is not affected, it's not different any time you play it, it's just gonna be affected by how other people play their moves. And so in that respect, it's very much like chess or any old school abstract game that doesn't change every time you play it and therefore you can get better at it or you can learn the right moves. For example, you probably wanna get a tree further around the other side from where the game starts, it's gonna see more light at the right times of the game. 
at least that's my understanding. I, I'm not that good at photosynthesis. And I don't love that because it means that you have to learn to be good at the game. And then if you were to play it with someone new, they would be screwed because they haven't they haven't learned as they played. They're completely new to it. And I just prefer games that are more immediate, certainly abstract games. So things like Onitama or Santorini, where everything's different every time you play it. And so you're not always playing with those same rules in mind. And you can't be really good at the game, it feels like, with those games. Photosynthesis also is quite long. I, I've tended to prefer abstract games that end in 20 minutes to half an hour and photosynthesis is really much more 45 minutes to an hour. It plays with two to four players, which is certainly an appealing quality that you don't get with that many abstract games, but it's very mean. And the more players you play with, people are gonna really struggle. It's about blocking off other people. That's where the differences lie. It's about thriving where other people don't. And it's, hard to think out you you having to watch around as the sun goes around where is it going to hit my trees where should I plant them and that's another thing that I struggle with this game is it's it really lends itself to analysis paralysis not just with me but with pretty much everyone I've played it with you have to think over your turn or at least you really want to because it's so mean because you're going to get punished and every time I have played this I've seen players one player get punished they make a couple of mistakes early on in the game because then they didn't know they were mistakes and it cost them and there's no catch-up mechanism in photosynthesis. If you get behind early on in the game, you're probably not going to come back or at least I've not seen that. And that's another reason that makes it feel old-fashioned. It doesn't have a variable setup. It's incredibly mean and there's, there's no catch-up mechanism. So it's it's a punishing game. If you don't mind those aspects in an abstract game, then absolutely check out Photosynthesis. It's beautiful to look at and it's got some really nice thematic touches. I feel like I would have liked Photosynthesis more if it had a random setup, certainly if it was shorter. I think that it's a game that I respect, but it's not one that I'm really that interested to play again. That's Photosynthesis. Meeple Circus is a game that I was really excited about at Essen. This is a dexterity party game. You're playing against a timer. And you're having to build your own circus. You're doing that by collecting meeples and um, animals and balls and podiums, and you're stacking them up in this circus ring. You've got a two minute circus soundtrack playing whilst you're doing it, and you're trying to get the most points. The way you're getting points is a bit richer and deeper than your average dexterity game. There are cards that give you certain criteria. So they might tell you, you need to balance a donkey on top of an elephant, or you need to have two acrobats on their side with a ball in between. And you won't always get to be able to complete all of those criteria because it depends what pieces you get. You start with only two basic acrobats, and then you're drafting for other things to have in your circus. So you're selecting from these tiles and you're collecting the things that you're gonna to want to then score points with. So in the first round, you might not get to score points in the way that you wanted to because you weren't able to get all of the things because somebody else took the tiles that you wanted. And so it's interesting, it adds more thought than your average dexterity game because you're ha it, there's a puzzle quality to it. And I like that you have to sort of look at your pieces much like in the games Aluru or Dimension that give you these puzzle criteria and you're having, how can I best use them to score the most points? And you're having to do that against a timer, but you're also having to think about which tiles are best for you to take to get the items you need. And I think that that works really nicely. And I think that a lot of people are gonna enjoy that. I've actually found that people sit down to play this game and they see the pieces and they start stacking them. And the, the drafting and those extra elements, they just slow down getting to the excitement. The excitement of any dexterity game is that stacking and the spectacle it creates. And I'm not sure that it's worth all the time spent on it when really you just want to build your circus. It makes the point scoring very limited. There's no reward for making a really great 
circus, there's no flair reward. You don't get to vote on who made the best circus. And so you can get to a point where if you don't have any red acrobats, there's no benefit to building some amazing stack that took you ages and was really risky. You just score points for the really basic things that you did. And sometimes you'll leave pieces off to the side that you didn't even use. The other thing that I've found is that it doesn't have the excitement and the spectacle of dexterity games that I really love. You think of Junkart or Rhino Hero, you're building these big towers, they collapse down and everyone's watching and it's entertaining. And in Meeple Circus, it's very much like if a tree falls in the wood, is anyone, can anyone hear it? If you're building a circus and nobody's watching, is it as entertaining? Because I think the joy of a dexterity game is people watching you make mistakes or try something and then it all falls over at the last minute. And Meeple Circus only has that in the third round. In the first two rounds, you're all playing simultaneously. Because of that extra thinkiness, I think sometimes the excitement is, it's, it's very much secondary to the point scoring. And so I think that Meeple Circus is a dexterity Euro game. It's perfect for people that like doing their own thing. They're all about points and strategizing. Another reason for that is that there's no interaction. You, uh, aside from maybe taking something that another person wants, but you're not taking it because they want it, you're taking it because you want it. That's it, you have no impact on anyone else's game. And again, I think the joy of dexterity games that I love is that you're making it hard for the next player or you're, you're watching kind of the fruit of your labors in junk art get passed on to someone else and things like that. In the third round, you have these challenges. Some of them are dexterous challenges. So you have to build your tower with one hand. You have to build it with your wrong hand. You have to build it with one, with one hand over your eye. So again, with one hand and with a lack of depth perception. I think that they're nice challenges. They certainly make the game a lot harder, way more likely to have calamitous events. It makes it fun and of course everyone's watching you in the third round. What I found though is that there's really only five of those types of challenges. And so you, if you wanna play with those, you're just gonna see them again and again, and it makes the game very samey. I've played this a whole bunch of times now, and I had a great time playing it. I haven't mentioned that I played it on Shut Up and Sit Down. We, um, with no pun included, we did a live playthrough. So you wanna see how the game plays, you play the entire game, and it was a lot of fun. And every game since just hasn't, I, I feel like it's diminished with every game because those challenges are the same. Now, there is another type of challenge, and they're silly challenges. So, for example, one person might have to describe everything they put in with adjectives. One person has to name all the animals and acrobats as they put them into their circus. One person has to talk about the private lives of their acrobats. And that's funny, but it's really only funny once. Once you've seen someone name acrobats, it doesn't matter that the next time the, the, the new person gives them different names, because it's kind of lost its freshness and, and the appeal, at, at least in my experience. Also, I think it's at odds with a game that is quite focused on points and strategy. It's a deeper dexterity game. And then you've got these very silly party elements. I think that Meeple Circus is a good dexterity game. For me, it's not a great one. It comes in a box that is far too big for the components that are in it. And so therefore really has to earn its place in a collection. I think it immediately loses points. Any game with Meeple in the title is losing points because it's not gonna have crossover appeal to the mass market who have no idea what a Meeple is. And when they find out, they're just gonna be like, oh, well, that's geeky. The theme of building a circus, and I think the, the basic fun of stacking up these pieces is great, but I've had a lot more fun with so many other dexterity games. And so it's a near miss for me, but I think there are a lot of people out there that will like the puzzly aspect that is doing something different and that is more to their taste. And so whilst it's not for me, Meeple Circus may well be for you. Cafe Fatale is a game that I picked up at Essen and this is from Zoc Verlag. And this is a simple dice game where you're trying to collect cheese, pizza and cake. I really like the cute theme to this. And it's a game that I believe at least is inspired by Las Vegas. Las Vegas, I talk about in my top 10 games to play at Christmas. Absolutely love that game from Rudiger Dawn. And on your turn, you roll a bunch of dice and then you place one of those numbers onto somewhere to try and 
have the majority to then win something back. So in Cafe Fatal, you've got a bunch of restaurant tables and they all have cheese and pizza and cake on them. Some of them will have maybe two or three of, of something and you're competing to win those tables. So you will place one, you'll roll all your dice, you'll place one of those sets of numbers. So if I roll three fives, I could place all of them, or if I roll one four, I could place one four. Where I start in this game is really interesting because I can pick any table, but from then on, it's all about being adjacent to that table that you started on. So generally people go for the appealing table. Now, cheese is only worth one point at the end of the game, pizza's worth two, cake is worth five. If you get a complete set of five of any of these things, so five cheeses, they double in points. And so you're, there is a bit of set collection going on. So generally people are gonna aim for this blueberry cake. So that's where people go on their first turn. But what you can do, and I find interesting about this game, is maybe you don't fight it out. You're playing a five player game and there's a couple of good tables. Don't waste all your dice fighting for what everyone wants because you won't get it all. Go for all the, all the cheese that nobody really wants. They're on tables on their own. They're away from everyone else. There's still moments of fighting it out in Cafe Fatal. There's probably less so than in Las Vegas. So I think there's less tension and there's less exciting moments. Las Vegas is very much about the fight and it's down to that last roll of the die and it can really swing. And whilst that's quite luck driven, I think it's really entertaining. In Cafe Fatal, you definitely have that, but the moments of fighting are maybe once around on certain tables and certainly in the last round of the game where everyone knows exactly what they want. And I felt that the game does play out a bit similarly each time. There's, there's a certain number of cake and cheese and pizza and there's really only enough, I think, certainly in a bigger game for one person to get a complete cake. So five slices of cake, that's worth 50 points. Generally, if they get that, they've won the game. And so it's about that person trying to complete that cake, maybe because they've already got three or four slices. Everyone else basically has to stop them because otherwise nobody else can win. I think that's a little bit unsatisfying that you, you have to bash the leader so much, but it does give you climactic finishes because it really goes one way or the other. It's a very simple rule system and yet there's just these little clever touches to Cafe Fatal that make it interesting. Does it make it a better game than Las Vegas? I'm sort of still on the fence with that because I think that Las Vegas ultimately ends up being more exciting because it's a purer game, but Cafe Fatal has more interesting thought to it that you can make better decisions. You can, I would guess, Gamers are gonna be better at Cafe Fatal than they are gonna be at Las Vegas. And so it's almost like there's a game there for everyone. I, I'm gonna keep this one for now. I really like it, I enjoy playing it, but they're so similar that I'm not sure that long-term I would want both. And as yet, I'm not sure which one I prefer. The only place I would really pick it up is that the box is way too big for the components that are in there. They should have made this, a, this could have been a really nice travel game. Alternatively, it could have been a bigger table game. The tiles are kind of small and the dice are really small and fiddly. They needed to make a decision here. Either go with that size box and make the components bigger or stick with something small and then you've got a really, really great travel game. But I mean, look, that's nitpicking. It's all about the game really. It's got nice artwork. It's got a really nice theme. And uh, so yeah, if you like light dice rolling games, absolutely check out Cafe Fatal. Big Bazaar is a speed reaction game. This is from Blue Orange Games, and on the face of it, it looks like a kid's game. I guess it is a kid's game, but it's one that works really well for adults. And the way it works is that you have a deck of cards and you are flipping over a card on your turn that's basically covering up any cards you had before, and you're looking for matches with other players. So you're playing in a circle, everyone's got a card in front of them, and if you match a color, you have to shout something faster than the other player. Now, what you shout depends on a few things. So on the cards, you've got 
some cute artwork. They're generally animals or they're inanimate objects that have sort of been brought to life and then they all have an element with them of some kind. So they're either dressed or they're holding something. So there's basically two things on each card. Sometimes you have to shout about what the animal is wearing or the thing is wearing or holding. Sometimes you have to shout the first letter of the animal in the picture. You have to shout a colour that is in the picture. You have to uh, talk about the habitat that you would find them in. You have to say a word that rhymes with the, the word that is represented on the card. You have to say a word, uh, you have to make the noise of the card, which is an especially funny one because some of these things like you have to make a noise of a bath. Uh, and uh, so that in itself is just like, is brilliant fun. It's not always the same thing that you're having to shout out. So not only do you have to look at the card and determine what it is that you're trying to say, but you have to remember what rule it is. And as the game progresses, the rules change for each different color of card. So if I match with a pink card, that might be that I have to say the, the letter that the that thing ends with. So if it's a lion, I would have to say N. But if I match a red card, I might have to match the habitat. So if I've got a train, I would say train yard or track. And it's really hard. If you've ever played the game Anomia, then you'll know exactly how this game works really. And it's clearly been inspired by that, but it's taking it up a notch. This would be an absolutely great drinking game. And we had a blast. I played it the other night with Meeple Circus and um, a couple of other Essen games, and this was our favorite one. It, it plays really quickly, and we just went straight back into it because it was like, people get so frustrated with themselves that they wanna go and try again and get better at it. I wish that the deck was a bit bigger. You, you're gonna see those cards again very quickly because you're gonna wanna play again quickly, and there's just, not that many cards to get through. In the rules, it says that you can shout out about either card. I think you should be shouting out about your opponent's card because you can be looking at your card and understanding it. It's much better to be shouting out about someone else's card because you can't possibly keep track of what you should be saying for everyone else's card. And of course, you've got to look across the table. It just creates more calamity. It's much harder and, and therefore a lot more fun. And I, I do like that there's a rule where if you, shout out the wrong thing, you get punished. The other person gets the points for that round. They get more points. So you really encourage not to make a mistake. And of course you ultimately will. So look, this is a very simple game. I think you'll, you know already whether you like this type of thing. I really like it. It's absolutely got a place in my collection. That's Big Bazaar. Those are the games that I've been playing lately. Let me know what you think of them in the comments. And if you want to support Actual Lull, make it grow bigger and better, head over to patreon.com forward slash actual I'm John Perkis. Thanks for watching.